Hi everyone, I've got a really fun card for you today. Uh, this one looks like an ordinary card or ordinary envelope, but when you open it up, you've actually got a beautiful scene inside with 3D elements popping up. Uh, it's really easy to do. I'm going to walk you through step by step. I have used the new Textures Spring Awakening collection. I'm going to do a very quick run through of the items that I've used, and then we'll get straight into the tutorial. So the main item you'll see is the stamped images from the Wildlife stamp set. We've also got a tree that I haven't used and other sentiments. I have got the leafy borders as well. This is a circle and a corner. They're much larger than they actually show on the uh, packet here. So if I just take these out for you, you've got the circle, as you can see, quite big, and then the corner too. So you can build up your own frames and borders and whatever you need to create with these and they're suitable for all occasions and all seasons then i've also got the book page background this comes from a, a collection where i had this in with some other stamps and everybody loved it but it did sell out so you couldn't actually get this anymore so i've decided to bring out the book page background on its own this coordinates really nicely with the owl um, the fox the rabbit etc because they will fit nicely in that oval and then in this card, I've also used the foliage wreath, which is actually a half tone wreath stamp and the outline dies. I'm using the outline dies today, but uh, you can see more examples on my social media of me using the half tone stamp too. And then lastly, from this collection, I have also used these die cut words and alphabets. So you've got four sheets of words and then you've got four sheets of alphabets. So you can create your own personalized cards. Now there is more to the Spring Awakening collection, but you'll find everything linked down below so you can go and have a browse. Now let's get on with showing you how I create this beautiful pop-up card. So I'm going to start with making the envelope card and I'm going to be using the Creative Craft Products envelope. Um, it's an envelope box and a box card maker, something like that. So it's a scoreboard, 12 by 12 scoreboard, but it does have the uh, envelope sizes. So the guide clips into the back along with the scoring tool. And on here I have got um, a card size of six and a half inch by eight and seven eighths and it's a 12 by 12 so I wanted to make this as big as possible to make it a real sort of impact card so I've, I'm using the biggest card that I've got and that's 12 by 12 so first thing I'm going to do is take this measurement here now I've highlighted it in purple and I know it's probably tiny you can't read it but that says five and one eighth so what I need to do is put this corner of my card at five and one eighth along here let's just pull this across so that's going to sit just on the mark there. And then as you can see, score. So I'm just going to score down here. Let's just pop that under there. And it doesn't matter whereabouts on your scoreboard this is, but because I'm using a really large piece of cardstock, I need to make sure that it goes off the edge. So score down there with that at five at one eight there. And then I'm going to turn this around 90 degrees and I'm going to put the bottom of this lip just onto that score line that I've just made. This time I'm completely kind of ignoring the measurements. I don't need to see the measurements now because all I'm going to do is work my way around, turning it 90 degrees each time, putting the last score line along the bottom of that lip there and then scoring down. And as you work your way around, you'll find that the last one will join back up with where you were at the beginning. So there's my four edges. So now I can put this away. And another tool that I really love is, again, from Creative Craft Products, is the corner and notch punch. So this is going to cut the notches. So I just pop that. It's got two little wings, and it kind of goes on your score lines. This does the uh, corners, uh, or rather the edges, of each of the flaps of the envelope. So just do these. And this will come clear in a moment when I fold it all up, what this is actually cutting out. And then I also do the other end, the corners, just on here. Now I'm going to do all four, but one of them I'm actually going to trim down. I'll show you that in a moment. And this just neatens everything up. Now the cardstock that I'm using is around about 250 GSM. The reason that I've decided to make my own envelope for this, rather than just using a pre-made envelope, is because I wanted this to be as sturdy as possible, and in general, envelopes tend to be pretty thin. They tend to be paper. So I'm just going to take a scoring tool or a bone folder and just fold along those creases. So there's the side pieces. Here's the bottom one. 
there we go so there's your envelope and that's the top flap that obviously goes there now what I am also going to do is just take a pencil and I'm going to mark from here and here and just fold that too just make sure that's correct yeah just fold that like so because I just want to give myself a little bit of extra space in the image um, with that up kind of hiding a little bit you'll see why in a moment now I have created already an insert for this and you can see how this was created with my blending inks um, I've actually done a reel for that so that's going to go out really soon on um, I think they'll go on Instagram it'll go on YouTube shorts and such so if you have a look at the shorts on my YouTube channel here you'll be able to see a quick kind of time lapse of me creating this so it's very very quickly it's just um, smooching a little bit of grey ink uh, onto white watercolour cardstock so you see originally it's that sort of ivory colour putting a little scrap circle, a die cut circle of cardstock over that. And then I've inked round the edge with Lost Shadow. Um, I think it was Peacock Feathers, Uncharted Mariner, and then Black Soot. Okay, now the, re the way I got the shape of this, so I've got that slight black border, is I simply took my envelope shape, I put it onto the watercolor paper, placed it down, drew around with a pencil, and then I took my scissors and cut just inside that line by a few millimetre, about five millimetres, something like that. So that's going to sit just inside my envelope. So I'm just going to glue that down completely flat then fold that over on that crease. Let's say two layers of cardstock is really, really strong now, really thick piece of cardstock. Burnish it down. There we go. OK, so now I've got the flap and that is perfect. I'm going to start by adding some background shadows. So those silhouettes that we saw. Now I've used the textures foliage wreath here. This is a half tone stamp. It's actually a really big stamp. It's um, it's about six by six, if not even a little larger. I've not actually got it in here. I think it's in my pile of product. Um, and I've also got the outline die. So I've just used that outline die. So I've cut two of them here. These just make really perfect kind of um, sort of branches and twig silhouettes there they look beautiful in front of the moon I'm going to put them kind of interlinking like so I'm going to flatten the envelope out place these two down so they kind of cover as much of the envelope base as possible there like so and glue those in place too now these don't have to be perfect the idea is that they are natural they are organic they're not you know not perfectly symmetrical or anything like that so now i'm going to close my envelope up so i'm going to run a line of glue down these two edges and adhere that Next, I'm going to use the wildlife stamps. Now, I have stamped these and I have coloured them in. You could leave them monochrome if you wanted. You could do very basic colouring. The uh, way I did it is an alcohol pen for the base colour after stamping. So I stamped these with um, Memento ink. So that's a dye ink. It dries really quickly. Then I brushed over the images with the palest colour of the animal. So this was a very pale orange colour. This was a very pale brown. This was a very pale grey um, or vice versa. I can't remember. They're similar colours. Um, and then I did a wash of that pale colour over the entire image. So that way I had no bright white areas when I'm colouring. I've already got this base colour down. Then I went in with pencil crayons and I just picked out highlights, shadows um, and the base colour, which is kind of like your the colour that there's the most of. So, for example, in the fox, that was an orange. I went over most of the image, but I did already prepare in advance whereabouts I was going to have my... Um, my characters as such, whereabouts on this card, because I wanted to have the uh, moonlight kind of hitting them in the right areas. So by having them like this, I knew that this side of the owl needed to be lighter and this side darker. The same with the rabbit and the same with the fox. So I had the right, like I said, the right um, moonlight hitting the right places 
with if you've got one a white pencil is brilliant at highlighting areas afterwards or you just need to consider that before you lay down too much color and then going in with a dark gray dark brown or a black pencil and going in some of these areas shadows and such just thinking about what would be darker like between the rabbit's legs for example that really makes a massive difference so i've got the three stamped images i've colored them in and i've cut them out now what I want to do is the fox is just going to uh, sit here. He's not going to actually be raised up or anything. So straight away I know I can glue him down. Now I want the owl and the rabbit to kind of just lift up a little bit from the surface of the envelope as I open it. So I've created these little blocks. Now these are, I've got three of them here, but I've got a fourth one to make. So these are strips of cardstock that are... Uh, one centimeter or I think it was actually half an inch sorry half an inch um, by five segments of half an inch so um, or a little bit larger so basically when you fold them over you've got five segments the width of these so across this way really depends on the size of the die cuts or the cutout images the ephemera whatever it is that you want to lift up so obviously you want to have them hidden that's why I've done them in black as well so they'll hopefully be hidden and the reason I've done five sections on each one is so that these will uh, overlap and I can just glue that to make the cubes so I'm going to pop a little bit of glue on here and then you can just fold them completely flat and those overlapping two pieces will glue together so don't be like me and try to hurry it and give it time there to stick so once I'll leave that one drying flat there and then you just can just pop them open as you can see once they're dry and these are going to fix to the back of each of your animals so again a little bit of glue I'm going to just put that on behind the rabbit's head and the same with the owl as well so around about there so you can see I've got a cube on each one there now what's going to happen is when we close our card this should be laid flat but as we open our card because this is going to be attached to the back there's going to be a little bit of pulling on it and it's just going to lift up lift up a little bit off the surface of the envelope there so make sure these are fully dry now I tried this lots of times testing out the position and everything and um, I kept moving it too quickly because the glue needed time to dry if you use something like a hot glue um, obviously that's going to dry a lot quicker but if you're using a cold glue maybe adhere these on and then go and cut some more embellishments or something like that while they dry thoroughly otherwise you're just going to end up peeling this off the back and having to keep re-gluing so I'm just going to add a small fold into the bottom of my images here I'll do it with both the rabbit and the owl there so just at the feet and this fold fold line needs to sit around about the distance of this away from your score line so as you can see this is around about half an inch here so I'm going to place the base of my owl this line here around about a half an inch along here so I'll glue this down first making sure this again is really secure before I move on after this bit with my rabbit I'm just going to move the fold line up a little bit because the rabbit's ever so tall or long I'm going to actually end up with the ears poking out if I'm not careful so I don't want the ears poking out when it's um, folded so just going to ensure that they are in and that will give me a little bit of a rough guide as to where that needs to be so again that fold line there is going to come about the same distance away here from the um, score line on the card I have to say positioning these was a lot of trial and error there was no one rule for each of them it really depended on the height the position on your card so um, if you have to fold it somewhere else so this rabbit I ended up folding it further up so that when it closes I've actually got everything hidden otherwise these ears were poking out the top so keep just kind of opening and closing and just playing with the position now they are secured to the base by their feet we can now add glue so if you fold your cubes flat down towards the crease 
and just place some glue on the bottom section of each of these cubes. Keep them down and then press your top flap into those. Again, give that just a few minutes to really set the glue. If you start lifting up too early, you're just going to end up with um, a big mess of torn and wet paper. So now they are glued and they are still drying, so I'm not going to open and close that too many times at the moment, but we can start to see the scene coming together. I am going to add in another die cut from the Texture Spring Awakening Collection. Now these are the leafy borders. I have die cut this corner. Now I've actually die cut it five times. Um, I probably don't need five of them, but I thought best to be safe than sorry. So one of them certainly is going to go in this top corner to kind of give it more of an enclosed look. I'm probably going to trim the leafy edges as well just to make it nice and straight along the um, envelope flap there but this is going to make it look as if you're kind of looking through the bushes uh, and seeing the wildlife surrounded by the leaves there. So tucking it behind the animals there like I say any overlapping leaves I can definitely um, just trim those off later once it's all dry. So there's one just to pop a little canopy over them and the next ones are actually going to sit around here and behind, just behind the animals here. But I'd like them to kind of, as this opens up, be almost stretched so that they lift up a little bit. So to do that, we're going to need to have them folded up when they close. So for this, I'm going to glue the two ends of the corner here and just the ends for now. And I'll position those where I want them once the envelope is open. So I'll position this corner. Bear in mind it should all sort of tuck in a little and that one like so but pull it reasonably tight so that that's where it would be when it opens up so you've got a little bit of dimension and movement there hopefully you can see that's lifted off so again let that dry just let that glue adhere those two end pieces and then as you close it what you want this to do is actually fold outwards now I might tuck my rabbit ear behind that so I want this to fold inside the flap so I'm just going to tease it by pushing this in as it closes and then press that down and that should give me some crease lines as you can see that open up and I've got the rabbit there now I'm not sure whether I'm going to keep the ear there or not whether I want his ear to come in front so let's try it with the ear behind and in front and see which I prefer I don't want to hide the rabbit I spent a lot of time coloring it yeah I think that's better I think you get that movement there you get that lifting up perfect now I'm going to do the same on the other side again so just to recap I'm going to glue the two corners or the two ends of these leafy flourishes first secure those down so this is going to go to the opposite side around the owl. So pop this bit down by the fox, this bit down by the owl. I know that I want this lifted up kind of like so. Once you add a crease in as well, that gives it more shape. That will lift up more. And I'm going to want it to fold around the owl and in there. And then gently lift it and see whether that is catching at the moment that's catching on some oh there we go okay so I had one little leaf that had glue on it and it was catching so there you can see I've got the two pieces let's just pop that down again make sure that kind of gets the muscle memory almost make sure that is just sealing and hitting where it needs to be perfect so I've kind of got this flourish now these two corners are a little bit bare so I've got a little bit more here and I'm, these are the ones that I'm kind of going to trim down and glue to the back here and here so that those areas are filled in even when it's all lifted up on this corner here as well to fill in this space. Again these will need to be creased along with the card. While that glue is drying I'm just going to trim along here so I'm just going to trim the edges off this first one we laid down. So now everything folds in really beautifully when I open that up 
that looks lovely now I have got although it's only just overlapping the rabbit's ear there is white so I think the best way to combat that without it looking like without me snipping his ear basically is to just color the back of that black I'm going to also add in a couple of toadstools. These are from a previous collection of mine. They are from the uh, Woodlands collection and I just thought they would look really cute in here. So I'm just popping them in underneath. So one there, one along here with the fox, I think, like so. So they're just tucked in there too. And lastly, we need a sentiment that also pops out along with everything else. And I have chosen to go with this one. Now, part of the um, new collection are these fabulous die cut sentiments. So you've got words here that all pop out in this really fun brush script. But we've also got individual letters as well. So if you want to spell a name, a place, a saying, a phrase, or something that you've just not already got in stamp or die form, you can do that so you can really personalise your cards. So I've just taken the word you, and I've also used my sentiments for all pack. Uh, these are all paper strips in black and white, and I've kind of chopped one up. So it did say made for you with love, but I've taken the you out from the strip and added it around here. Now I'm going to do the same again with these little blocks. So the little cubes that we used as the mechanism to make the owl and the rabbit lift up a little. I'm going to use these two. Now this time I'm actually going to be placing these side by side. And the reason I've done them side by side like this is just so that I can get some additional depth on there. So I'm going to be gluing one of the short edges and one of the long edges and this is going to go in my the crease of my card so the short edge is going to go on the back flap here and the long edge is going to go on what I'd call the card base and again we can press this down and secure it once again do give that time to dry don't be too eager with um, pulling it around until the glue is thoroughly dry and I'm going to place my sentiment on the front of this I'm going to utilize the uh, base of the Y there and place that on the front so that's now lifted it forward so as you can see the animals are here the sentiment is here so that's come forward a little bit so that's going to make it stand out even more so a little bit of glue just on the bottom and I'm going to put that onto what we've just created. And the best way for this to all set, all the glue to set, is to just fold that. Now I just want to make sure those leaves don't get in the way of this drying. There we go. And I would say pop something heavy on there. Um, just for a few moments, that's probably not even heavy enough actually, um, or a book or something like that, just to allow that to really dry. In the meantime, you can be creating a panel to go on the front of your card that then coordinates. So from this collection, I have used the book page background, that's a mouthful, book page background, and I have actually stamped it onto a blue cardstock in black ink um, because this blue works really nicely with the bright blue of the um, kind of the moonshine that we've got inside the card. Um, I've then used some nesting dies just in the center and I've used Happy New Home uh, on here. This is from this stamp set, the Wildlife stamp set. Um, and I've inked around the edges in brown. Now, this doesn't have to be obviously a stamp sentiment. This could be the name of the recipient. So this kind of acts as an envelope and a card in one. So I'm just going to adhere this on. And this is a really nice way of utilizing a stamp if it's in portrait and you want to put it onto a horizontal shaped card or envelope. So that's the front of my envelope done. And when we open it up, we've got that fabulous image there with elements popping up. You've got the woodland that you're peeking through. I just think that's really fun and totally unexpected because your recipient hopefully won't expect to see that when they open the envelope. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you can uh, have a go yourself at something like this. Create yourself a little scene or entire world inside an envelope card. Now of course you could put a message on the back here if you wanted. The great thing is though because of the couple of layers that we've used on the flap of the envelope this is going to stand up like this all on its own because it's nice and sturdy. So when it's displayed that's what you're going to see. The recipient is going to display it like so. 
so how much fun is that so i hope you've enjoyed seeing this tutorial and i hope you like all the new items from the spring awakening collection everything i've used can be found down below or through this link just here um, please do subscribe to my channel if you've not done already and i think you'll also like this video that i'm just putting on the screen here for you take care everybody see you again really soon